I'm gonna be needing some water for this video. Sorry if there's buzzes flying everywhere. I love this blanket so much. Y'all, I'm gonna just tell you right now, I am all about some orange pants. <laughs> wow. Happy 2024! Hey y'all, it's Tara from YoKeeby.com. Welcome to my channel where I share crochet and knitting patterns and tutorials as well as finished projects and lots and lots of fun fiber things. I apologize for my voice today. I'm pretty sure that we had the flu a couple of weeks ago and so now I am finally on the mend. All of our family's on the mend thankfully, but I do still have this residual funny voice. So you know it's one of those things where like you're feeling much better but you sound much worse. So I hope you guys can bear with me with this silly voice. <laughs> and slight cough. But I wanted to share with you guys everything I made in 2023. I've been wanting to make one of these videos since last year. I saw everybody post what I made in 2022. It got me to thinking I need to write everything down that I make. I was really not in the habit of doing that. I mean, I usually document things with photos and videos and things like that. But I was like, you know what? For 2023, I am going to write everything down. I'm going to write the yarn I used, the pattern I used, whether it was my own design. Really just keep a journal of everything that I made. I think there are still a couple of things that I missed the photos for. A lot of it I have footage of and so I'm super excited about it. Now I want to preface this video by saying in no way am I trying to say that oh wow look at all this stuff that I made for 2023 or I never want it to be discouraging and so I just want to preface this by saying I hope this in no way seems like I'm bragging about the projects that I finished or anything like that. Honestly I just thought it would be fun to kind of have an inventory of everything that I made to see what yarn I used to see what patterns I made to see if I made more of one thing than another this year I made a ton of gifts so that was the majority of what I was finding out this year please do not get discouraged about what anybody else makes you have made amazing things and that is awesome it is amazing that we can create things with these two hands and if you're just learning to crochet just learning to knit just learning to sew way to go you're doing amazing and just keep it up keep practicing keep going so I really just wanted to go through everything and tell you guys what projects I worked on, what yarns I used. If there are any questions you have about specific projects, please put that in the comments below. I'll be sure to link every single pattern that I can in the description box. I just want it to be inspiring. Inspiring to keep going on your own projects. Maybe there are some new patterns that you are excited about making. Maybe there's a new yarn you want to use. Just something like that. I just want this to be a fun and inspiring video and in no way do I want it to be discouraging. I would love to hear what your favorite project was this year, how many projects you completed this year, if you learned to knit, if you learned to crochet, if you learned to sew, if you learned to macrame. I would just love to hear any of those things. Please leave them in the comments below and I think that it's a great way for everyone to interact with each other too about things that they're making. Let's go ahead and into everything that I made in 2023. So here is pretty much what I have on hand here of the things that I made in 2023. Now, like I said, there were several items that were gifts, so I don't have those, but I do have either video footage or a picture of it. And so I'll be sure to insert that here on the screen as I go through it. I thought that I had made a lot more things than I did actually make. All in all, I made around 15 to 16 projects this year. So I really thought that it was kind of going to be more than that. Or, you know, your year always seems like it's going to be long, but then somehow the time gets away from you and the year goes by fast and somehow it is already the next year. I can't believe it's already 2024. So let's set this down and we'll go through one piece at a time. Definitely gonna be needing some water for this video. So first up we have these basket check socks. I started these in December of 2022 but then finished them in January of 2023. Oh no, maybe I didn't finish them in January. Actually I may have finished them more like March because I forgot that we took them on a road trip. But I did start them in December. I actually got this yarn from Hedgehog Fibers for Christmas and so I was very excited to get started on a new pair of socks. These are looking a little worn at this point because I wear them all the time. Here it gets pretty cold and so I wear wool socks all the time. I wear these in boots and all that stuff and I try to take care of them really well but y'all I'm gonna tell you right now that when it comes to socks and even socks that I make I do not hand wash these. Like I will wash these in the wash. I wash them on delicate and then of course dry them on delicate too but I I just, I just don't have time for that. I need these to be functional and they've done pretty well. I mean, they are a little bit fuzzier probably than they would be if I hand wash them, but I honestly just would rather have them be functional and be able to use them on a regular basis than worry about whether they're hand washed or not. Love, love, love Hedgehog Fibers yarn. And this is a really cool pattern. 
If you've seen any of my other videos, you've probably seen me talk about this little box of socks. My friend Tara gave it to me and I absolutely love it. I've used several of the patterns in here. And so the basket check socks were just this pattern right here. And I really, really love them. They were fun. I just think it's a really unique and cool stitch pattern. And I think these were the first socks that had like a rounded toe, a more rounded toe than I knit. But it was funny because one of my socks ended up so much smaller than the other one. And I think it was just because I was rushing to get it done. But I ended up taking the toe out and redoing it because I was like, this is ridiculous. I need both of my socks to fit. But anyway, I love this little box of socks. I actually started another like scrappy pair of socks that I just used the basket check socks as a stitch count and I'm just doing stockinette the whole way down and then I did like the heel on this one. I thought that it was a really cool heel. I think it's called Eye of Patridge Heel Stitch. But I really like the way it turned out and so I did use that heel. So I'm almost done with those. Unfortunately I did not finish those in 2023 but they'll certainly be done in 2024. Next up we have this little Peter Pan collar sweater that I made for my daughter. This was a really fun project because my daughter actually designed it and it was so fun to try to pick out yarn. So we went to Colorado Springs with my husband. So we ended up going just to a few places that we don't usually get to go to because we don't have those stores here in the mountains. So we went to Hobby Lobby, we went to a Dollar Tree, we went to another amazing yarn store. I have a whole video about that if you want to check that out. I'll link it down below. But my daughter had designed this sweater and beanie set. We were Going to try to find some yarn that would work perfectly for her little design and then I was just going to you know make it up as I went along and tried to make it look as much like the picture as I could. I just love that she designed this herself. I just think it is the cutest thing. And so we did end up getting some yarn from the dollar store. It was the first time I'd ever gotten yarn from the dollar store. It's the Premier Just Yarn and then the Premier Just Active I believe. No this is the Just Active in teal and then I think this is the Just Premier in maybe petal and then rose or they could be switched and then this one might be quartz right here I'm not sure this is how it turned out I just think that it is so cute it's just a color blocked sweater love the slip stitch detail I used basic stitches but then I just used different ones in different places to kind of give it a little bit more texture I also put like a little split right here at the bottom so I was very excited with how it turned out and I may end up doing a tutorial for it I want to kind of make one for myself too so I may use some scrap yarn that I had on hand but we just had so much fun oh yeah and I think this is hobby Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn in Cherry Blossom. This was the only color that we got from Hobby Lobby and it's a really pretty color too. This is a super easy just throw it in the wash because it's all acrylic and I thought that that would be really good for my daughter. I did make a little short about the whole process of making this sweater so I'll link that down below. I did run out of yarn for both of the sleeves to be the same color. I wanted them both to be this lighter shade here but I did run out of yarn and yarn. yarn. <laughs> my voice is cracking me up right now. I really think that it turned out so so cute. So next up on the list here is this granny stitch blanket. You guys I love this blanket so much and we have it on the back of our couch all the time i'm sure you've seen it for some reason i had never done a granny stitch blanket i don't know why i've made lots of granny squares in the past i love granny squares they're one of my favorite things to make and every single time i saw a granny stitch blanket i was just obsessed it didn't matter what the colors were i feel like you just can't mess up a granny stitch blanket and so i was determined i was like you know what i am going to make a granny stitch blanket I just want something happy, something fun, something easy, something to just work on at night when your brain isn't really working, but you also just want to see all these fun, vibrant colors. It truly was so much fun. And it was so funny because as I was going, I would see different color combinations that I was like, oh, that would make the cutest design in the future. I used tons of scrap yarn. I've got some Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. I've got some Lion Brand Wool Ease. I've got some Drops Charisma and Premier anti-pilling I believe. I've washed this a couple of times and it really just gets softer each time I wash it. I absolutely love this. I need to make another one soon. I can't decide if I just want to make another one out of scraps or if I want to you know be purposeful about the colors that I choose and everything. And of course I didn't use a pattern or anything because with granny stitch you can just kind of keep going and keep going and keep going. But I did get a couple of tips from a YouTube channel. I can't remember the name of the channel but I'll be sure to link it down below and I'll put it up here too. The one specific tip that she said was when you're making your granny square each time you start a new row you start on 
the wrong side. So each new row that you start, you want to flip it over so that it's on the wrong side instead of always starting on the same side. And that way it keeps it nice and flat. And it really did work really, really well. So there's a tip that I got from that YouTube channel. And so I am super excited with how it turned out. I added a few tassels and honestly, I just love, love, love this blanket. I cannot wait to make another granny stitch blanket. I had forgotten about this one, but this is my unicorn sparkle beanie. I made this for a tutorial on my channel. So I'll make sure to link that down below if you want to check it out. I use Premier Sew Wooly in the color confetti and the color cream. I also use this Wool in the Gang Disco Down Yarn in Stardust Gold to hold together with the confetti. You can also find the free written pattern on yokibi.com. Next up on the list is my dumpling bag. So this I made as a part of the Knit Collage Make Along and the design is by Vanessa Reyes and it is such a cute bag, y'all. It is so cute, so fun. And they actually redid this one for the fall because it's such a popular design. It's easy, but then also you could add some extra embellishments to it. I decided to also learn macrame. I made a macrame base with this purse and I just thought that it would be a fun way to add a little something extra to the bottom. I couldn't decide if I wanted to purchase the little leather piece just to attach on the bottom or if I wanted to make something myself. I have a whole video about this dumpling bag that I will be sure to link down below. It tells the whole process of making the bag. This I worked on from about May to July and this is the wildflower yarn in the color tart orange. I'm not sure if she discontinued this color or not. I'll have to look and see but I thought it was a really pretty color orange. I also added a little tassel and then I braided this little drawstring here and added a bead. So I did purchase a couple of the accessories for it, but I ended up also just adding a few embellishments to it and kind of making it my own. I added these little daisies on here, which I absolutely love and I'm obsessed with. And I certainly want to make lots more of those. I don't know, embellish something with these little daisies. But this is definitely a really fun project and something a little unique because I normally make garments and things like that, but this was a fun little accessory project. I really want to make some more of these and I think I'm going to try out different things. So different straps. I actually purchased some straps that I didn't end up using and I ended up using this leather lace that I had. It's a fun pattern to have. You could use it for a project bag or just for a purse. So anyways, that is a super fun project. Okay, y'all, I am actually trying to do these in order and that was not the next one I made. I had it in my notes that way because I kept forgetting to write these down. Part of the whole reason of doing this was to just keep track of the things that I made, keep an inventory of things. It was funny because I would forget to write things down because I'm just not used to writing them down, but now I'm trying to get in the habit of it. And so actually this Lights Out cardigan was my next project. The reason why I got it mixed up in my notes is because this one actually I had started in the summer of 2022. You may have seen my whip video. I started it and just left it and left it and left it and finally finished it in March of 2023. It was definitely worth the wait. I absolutely love this sweater. It is such a fun, fun sweater. This is a free pattern on the Wool in the Gang website. So I'll be sure to link that down below. I use lots of scrap yarn. I use some knit collage wildflower yarn. I use some knit collage serenity boucle yarn. I don't think they carry this electric lime color anymore. I think they just discontinued it this um, holiday season. I used some fabric yarn that I had on hand. I threw in some wool in the gang disco down yarn, which is kind of like a thread, like a metallic thread. I put that in here. I have some King Cole limited and then some Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. Some hand dyed Hobby Lobby, some mohair in here. There's just all sorts of stuff. And I also use lots of different weights. And so this thing is huge. I love it because it's so cozy and so colorful and just all of my favorite things, oversized and colorful and full of texture, full of so many wonderful yarny goodies. I definitely made the sleeves very, very long and they're so cozy. And so I absolutely love this sweater. I'm so happy that I finally finished it. It was totally worth it. I do have a little short of me making this cardigan as well. So I'll be sure to link that down below if you want to check it out. So now back to the original order of what I made in 2023. 
So my next item for 2023 that I made was actually a gift that I made for Mother's Day and I made it for my mother-in-law and it was this beach throw. So I don't have this here to show you guys, but this was a fun project for several reasons, obviously because I wanted to make something super special for my mother-in-law, but also I hadn't used Stitch Fiddle in a while to make a graph and I used to be obsessed with making graphs and Stitch Fiddle. I really love making graphs. I love not only making them, but also working from graphs. They just make so much sense to me. For my geometry mind, it just makes so much sense to me. So it's kind of a fun way. I had an idea in my mind of what I wanted this throw to look like. My mother-in-law loves the beach. I wanted to not only have the writing on it, I also wanted to have the wave on it. And so it was just a really fun project. It did take me longer than I had anticipated. Of course, it was a blanket. Those seemed to take quite a while. And honestly, I made several blankets or at least started several blankets last year. I didn't finish them all. I did learn a lot along the way as to if I was going to put this into pattern form or anything like that, how I would do it differently than how I made it. And ultimately it did work out how I wanted it to look, but I would change just a couple of things that would make it easier to make as a pattern. So if you guys are interested in this as a pattern, let me know and I can certainly get the graph out for you guys. I can make a tutorial. I did use Bernat Forever Fleece for this blanket and this is really becoming one of my favorite blanket yarns. It's super soft. It washes really well. And so, I'm so sorry about my voice, y'all. The colors I used were balsam, pink, dark eucalyptus, and then white. But I was really excited with how it turned out and I was excited to get back into creating graphs. I'm sorry I don't really have more of it to show you guys, but hopefully you get the idea of how the blanket turned out. And the next project was also a gift. This I was making for my grandmother-in-law for her birthday, which was gonna be in July. So I started this one in June and I finished it in July. So it didn't really take me too, too long. It was a fun project because I got to do some things that I don't normally do. I've done quite a bit of amigurumi in the past, but never really anything like this. You know, this you kind of use some inserts and crochet around the inserts. I do have a video where I share all about this and then another gift that I was working on at the same time. It was just a really neat project. I was excited to use up some yarn that I already had on hand. I used paint box yarn and paint box DK yarn and I believe rose red, slate gray, lime green. I think taupe was kind of that you know, taupey color. And then blush pink was the other color I used, I think. I'll try to make sure to link any of the yarns down below that I can as well. This was a really fun project and I was excited because I knew how much my grandmother-in-law loved flowers and so I just thought that it was an adorable pattern. I'll be sure to link the Etsy pattern down below as well because the pattern was super easy to follow and I absolutely love it. I think it is the cutest, cutest pattern. I made this classic teddy bear at the same time that I made the watering can with tulips and it was kind of interesting I made it for a gift, but I made one and wasn't super happy with it. So I remade it and then finally was happy with it. You can find all of those details in the video about those crochet gifts. I also ended up adding a cute little heart to the teddy bear's tummy. It was made out of burnet velvet and I thought it just was a cute little addition. But this was my next finished project. It is the classic teddy by Darling Jador. So next on the list is my little Vest Timber vest. I made this vest for my daughter as a part of the Vest Timber make-along hosted by my friend Marquita. And I was so glad that she did this make along because I was really wanting to make a vest and specifically for my daughter. It was the perfect timing to just get myself in gear and to get a project cranked out pretty quickly. I used Drops Air for this. I had just gotten some yarn for my birthday from the Wool Warehouse. And so I wanted to try this Drops Air and it is so light and airy, just like the name, but I really, really loved working with it. I only got one ball or one donut of this electric I think it was called electric orange. I'm pretty sure it was the color. But I was so excited to try the orange. I really wanted to kind of make a pair of pants for myself out of that orange. I don't know that I will end up doing that. I did get this other color too, which is pink sand. And I do want to make pants out of that color. But I am all about some orange pants, let me tell you. But I don't know if I'll end up making a pair of orange pants out of it. I have to see first if I like the pants that I have in my mind to make. But this was just a really fun project. It didn't take me very long. I used seed stitch for a it mainly besides the ribbing here around the neck and then also I didn't plan on making it color block like this but I ran out of yarn I only had that one donut like I said and so 
I ended up just doing color blocking here on the back and really I could have made this vest a little bit longer but I was trying to conserve yarn because I didn't know how much yarn I needed for those pants. It really turned out cute and it's a fun little layering piece even if it's a little cropped you can wear it over something a little bit longer. I started in August and finished in September but I think it only ended up taking me a couple of weeks. I did start another vest that I didn't end up finishing and I still need to finish. There's several projects that I started that I did not finish but I will save those projects for my upcoming whip video. There's lots that I want to get finished, lots that are super fun that I started, so I cannot wait to get going on that. I may share a couple of things I've started in this video, but I want to save most of those for the whip video. The next project I made, I believe this is number 10, I think number 10 or 11, it's the Princess Charlotte cardigan. This pattern is from Little French Knits. I already had the yarn on hand, it's Drops Baby Merino. Drops Baby Merino has the most amazing texture and I made this as a baby gift. This is the first baby sweater I had ever made. Like I made some things for my daughter that were more like toddler sweaters, but this was, you know, a baby baby sweater and it was so fun. I absolutely love that Drops Baby Merino. The texture on that is gorgeous, gorgeous, and it is so affordable. So I highly recommend it for baby gifts. I've made baby socks out of it and then this cardigan. I love, love, love it. I really want to get some colors in it just for future projects. I absolutely love the way it turned out. I'll be sure to link the pattern down below because if you love making baby gifts like me I think this is a great great baby gift. I feel like I'm getting confused here. I think that this is either 11 or 12. I don't even know at this point but it is my most recent video. You guys may have seen the video last week that I can or last week not last week a couple weeks ago before Christmas. Yeah before was it before Christmas? I think it was before Christmas. But anyways, it's my last video, so I'll be sure to link that down below where I have the whole process of making this Happy Dance Cardi. But this is my Happy Dance Cardi in this amazing Happy Dance yarn. I absolutely love this yarn. It was the first time ever using this yarn. This was my fall 2023 Knit Collage Make Along project, and it was such a good project, like I talk about in the video, just because it was an easy project, but also still so fun because of the yarn and how special it is. I absolutely love it and can't wait to wear it. I did also do a little short of me styling it three different ways, which I did put in the video as well, but I just have more of it in the short, I think, where you can kind of see it up a little bit closer. This was a great, great project. I absolutely love it. I won't go into too much detail just because it was my last video. So if you want to check out more of the details about my Happy Dance Cardi, I'll be sure to link that down below. Next up, we've got my scrappy rug. You guys may have seen a couple of my shorts about this and also my post in the community feed. I had wanted a rug. I just washed this so that's why it's like on my lap. <laughs> Otherwise I probably wouldn't be putting it on my lap because I am actually using it in the guest bathroom. I was curious how it would hold up in the laundry but y'all I'm just telling you like my socks. I do not have time to be dealing with a rug that needs to be hand washed. So that's actually what happened to me the first time and why I had to remake this rug is that I had this rug from Hobby Lobby and I ended up washing it one too many times and so it was falling apart and I didn't want to waste any of of the scraps from it and so I decided to make a rug for my guest bathroom and all the scraps I just crocheted with crochet thread around all of these scraps. I love the way it turned out and it really held up well in the wash even the little tassels here they're even like nice and worn on the end because you know the crochet thread texture is a little bit harder and so I love how the texture is softer now after being washed. I did wash it on delicate and also dry it on delicate and none of these scraps I think are silk or anything like that but they all did really well in the wash so if you have any scraps like that or you know just something you're taking apart that's polyester or anything like that that has the same texture. I don't know the fabric content of all of these pieces of fabric Fabric, but it worked really well in the wash so this was a fun one. I started this in November because I really wanted to finish it for Thanksgiving. We were having family coming but I did not finish it until December I think but I was able to use it for family that came in December. I'm super happy with how durable it is. I just think it's a great rug. It's so easy to do. Now it definitely takes a while but I just made a little half double crochet border and then I made single crochets around the fabric strips and then some of them I would ball up a little bit 
more just to give more texture some of my left hanging out I really wanted it to keep that handmade scrappy feel and so I made the sides different lengths and then I had some that were folded over and some that were just left frayed at the end and so I really am excited with how it turned out and I love when something is super functional and next up is this crochet doily I made a few of these this is a tutorial that I have on my channel I'll be sure to link that down below but I needed something for my dining room table and this is exactly what I wanted to go under like a ceramic tree that I had and then to put some other little trees and candles and things like that but this I designed just really kind of on the fly it didn't take too too long to design my mother-in-law had given me this really cute Christmassy ribbon that she got from Marshalls so I thought it was a perfect opportunity to design something fun for Christmas but you don't have to make it for Christmas it can be for any time of the year you can make it in all different colors I made one out of scrap yarn and then I made another one for the tutorial out of some paint box Aran yarn that I had on hand I was excited with it I was excited that it came together so quickly because I always try to come up with a tutorial for Christmas and for some reason I always wait till the last minute and so I have like no time at all to get the item designed completed the tutorial filmed and out before Christmas for people to make it for Christmas so I seem to do that every single year I was excited that this one it went pretty quickly I think I started and finished it within a couple of weeks or three weeks or so the last two projects that I have unless I am forgetting something which is definitely possible I was better about writing everything down this year but I still need to improve on that so the last two things I made in December were gifts and I have this friend that has chickens and she loves chickens and so I really want to make a little rooster ornament for her or chicken ornament sorry if there's fuzzes flying everywhere that is another thing that I always do is leave gifts to the last minute and I knew that these wouldn't take super long but I really should have thought about making them far sooner than when I did but I found a pattern on Etsy I'll be sure to link it down below and it was so cute so easy to follow I was able to whip up these little roosters and chickens in no time and so I made one for each of her family members and I was very excited about those. The last thing that I made were little baby socks. I really enjoy making baby socks. I have this pattern. It's called Think Wee Piggy Socks or something like that, but I'll link it down below. I got it on Etsy as well. I feel like baby socks are a little bit of a challenge only because they're so small and this one also has a little bit of color work. Color work isn't hard or anything, but it gets a little bit fiddly with these tiny little socks. And so I do love making baby socks, but I sort of have to get it in a rhythm and I hadn't made any in a long time. So you have to kind of make a few pairs and then you're like oh I need to make like 30 pairs of these in a row so that I can be fast and they look uniform and the tension of the stitches all looks good. I love being able to give those as a gift too because I think it's just such a fun special gift to give a tiny little baby sock. I just think that they're so cute. They're so cute. One thing that I did learn was a new way to do a provisional cast on. This was way easier to do. I feel like it was just better all around. I was very excited about learning a new way so I didn't like dread a provisional cast on every single time. These I also use Drops Baby Merino on. It works fabulous for these little socks. I did just want to share a couple of the projects that I started and really really wanted to finish them in 2023 and did not finish them but I am super excited to finish them for 2024. One is the Harley sweater and I know you guys have seen this one and I am very excited to finish it. I cannot wait to wear this sweater. So this one I am super, super excited about making for 2024. I'm hoping to wrap that up very quickly. But my other project that I've got is this blanket that I'm working on. It is a gift for someone and so I feel like I need to finish this first before I start my Harley sweater. So I really like the way that it's turning out. It's got just a little bit of cabling here and I just think that it is so so pretty. You guys helped me and voted for the stitch pattern that you liked. This one I think got second place but I just loved it so much and thought that it really went well for the gift recipient and so I've been working on this for a while and I've gotten pretty far. It's very very long. It's definitely bigger than I thought that I was going to make this blanket. It's going to be super cozy. This one I also use Bernat Forever Fleece for which like I said is becoming one of my favorite blanket yarns to use just because it's so low maintenance and super super soft. I found this yarn 
in so many more colors and also for such a great price on walmart.com. I think I got six skeins of this for like 30 something dollars. It was insane. Let's see how much yardage they have. Each one has 194 yards. So I'm certainly gonna go on there again to see if I can grab some more colors in this to make the tutorial for it. But I'm very excited with how this one is turning out. And so those are like the major projects I wanna finish. I did start also this cranny square blanket for my daughter that I started in 2023 and have not finished or gotten any more done on it. But overall, y'all, I am very happy with everything that I got finished. And that is how I always want it to be. Like I said, I want this to be encouraging and inspiring. And I hope that it was for you. I hope that you love everything that you made in 2023. Even if you only got the chance to make one or two things, that is awesome. You should be very, very proud of yourself. I really had fun at keeping track of and looking back on what I made the year before. This year it was really fun to make some things that I needed as far as home decor goes. Also to try some new things with gifts. I love using gifts as an opportunity to either try a yarn I've never used before or try a technique I've never used before or maybe try a new pattern, try a new style of crochet or knitting. So I just think that it's a fun opportunity. I just use each gift as well as a way to challenge myself and learn something new also. Thank you guys again for joining me for everything I made in 2023. I'm sure you are so sick of hearing my crazy voice at this point, but I hope you've had an awesome start to 2024 and I cannot wait to dive into all the fun crochet and knit things for 2024. See you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. Oh my goodness. Bye. <laughs>